It's a proud week to be a Lobo. Both men's and women's soccer teams have made it to the NCAA tournament. Plus, more updates on the fluid unoccupied Albuquerque movement. All this and more on UNM News. Hello, I'm Adam Camp. And I'm Katie Fosterling. UNM Student Affairs has granted the Unoccupy Albuquerque a stopgap permit to conduct intermittent demonstrations in UNM's Yale Park. According to the permit, protesters may organize at Yale Park from 5 to 10 p.m. for the remainder of the weekend. And next weekend, November 12th and 13th, the permit allows protesters to demonstrate from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Last weekend, UNM's interim provost, Chowki Abdallah, met with demonstrators while UNM President David Schmidley spoke with hunger striker Sebastian Pice after he agreed to end his fast. UNM News producer Baron Jones has posted a pictorial history of the Occupy Berkey movement on campus at our UNM News website, unmnews.wordpress.com. Now the protesters are trying to lobby the city of Albuquerque to find a more permanent home. Protesters say they are demonstrating against economic and political inequality. Illegal immigration is a hot-button issue. A small part of the controversy surrounds the polit politically correct way to refer to those who enter the United States without proper documentation. Jamie Garcia reports on the Society of Professional Journalists' recent panel discussion at the University of New Mexico over immigration's war of words. The Society of Professional Journalists recently held a forum at the University of New Mexico to discuss the varying forms of the term illegal immigrant within journalism. I'm going to introduce the folks we've invited, Sandra Ball. Members of the panel included Sandra Martinez of the Santa Fe New Mexican, Russell Contreras of the Associated Press, Dan Herrera of the Albuquerque Journal, and Liz Cleary of the UNM Daily Lobo. Whereas a fundamental principle in, embedded in our U.S. Last month, the Society of Professional Journalists put out a resolution asking news organizations and style guide editors to reconsider their use of the terms illegal immigrant and illegal alien to describe undocumented immigrants. So that's why we're here, to have that evaluation and discussion. Each member of the panel had a slightly different take on the issue. And most of us use immigrant or undocumented immigrant, unauthorized immigrant. The Associated Press, I have to follow the Associated Press style book. Style book. And what the style book says is that it uh, requires us to use the word illegal immigrant when we're talking about uh, immigrants, or those who are undocumented. Uh, the main thing we try to do is be consistent and be accurate, use terms that are recognized and recognizable, undocumented, what do you mean by undocumented? I don't think that undocumented is an inaccurate term because, especially in the daily Lobo community, we all know what that means. So as members of the media... The floor was then opened up for discussion. Richard Schaefer, a professor of journalism at UNM, was curious about the gray area surrounding students applying for visas. Um, where do you draw the line in, in asylum if you're not from Mexico and you apply for asylum? Your odds are, what, 60 to 70 percent, you'll get it. Illegal immigration is just one aspect of immigration that, that everybody focuses because it's on the trendy stuff. We, we get stuck in this one topic, in one portion of immigration. and we Martinez said that because most news organizations focus on the broad issue of illegal immigration, other issues like student visas never even get covered. And really explain the process so that, again, I don't convince anybody of either way, but do explain to people that immigration is a lot more complex. There's, what is it, 18 or 19 total asylum cases from Mexico have even been heard? Andrew Beal, a recent UNM graduate, wonders how the media deals with issues of Mexicans not eligible for asylum who are unfairly labeled illegal immigrants. Don't, we don't cover those stories and explain to people that Mexicans are not eligible for any type of asylum case. So we just, you know, we, and, and it's again one of those things that we don't go beyond the illegal immigrant story and really search into the fact that, and ex write explanatory stories that talk about this is why people pay a coyote $2,000 and not stay in Mexico to apply because chances are you're not going to get a visa, you're not going to get an asylum case. For UNM News, this is Jamie Garcia.
There are many expectations for Lobo men's basketball this season, and a new one just came up. Senior Drew Gordon, who transferred from UCLA two years ago, was placed on the 2012 Naismith preseason watch today. The award is named after Dr. James Naismith, who invented the game of basketball in 1891 and wrote the rule book of basketball. The award is given to nation's top college basketball player every year. Last year, the award was given to Brigham Young University's Jimmer Fredette. The UNM Lobo men's basketball soccer program prides itself in its national rankings and premier players. The team has reached the NCAA Tournament 7 of Coach Jeremy Fishbein's 10 years as head coach. One strength a layperson may not know about this Lobo men's soccer team has the seventh highest attendance in the country. Last weekend, I caught up with a group of these Lobo crazed fans. They have tape around their fingers, they have blood spots on their drums, they have tambourines, and they have nothing but passion for the game of soccer, especially Lobo men's soccer. Lobo senior Lance Roseboom says it's unlike any other experience he's had in soccer. Michael Green says Lobo fans are more passionate than the infamous fans of the United Kingdom. Coach Jeremy Fishbein says it's to the Lobo's advantage to have their unique supporters. And the unique ones they're referring to are none other than the Lobo beat kicks. The players have been more supportive than, than anybody because uh, I think they feel the energy that we provide maybe in a different sort of way than the rest of the crowd does. The team consists of Marshall's son Adam plus several other drummers and for the last two seasons from the time the Lobos start warming up until the final horn sounds the beat kicks keep the Lobos rhythm in check and as the playoffs approach the Lobos continue to beat away with an unbeaten sound. It was the first time I played played here. That was constantly in my head hearing that. It's just like, wow, they really don't stop playing. There is a painful effect to the beat kicks playing for the game's duration, which every bandage demonstrates. We've had split fingers. We have bleeding on our drum heads sometimes, and so we have to take precautions to tape up. The beat kicks have help from the opponent's goal as well. Hundreds of raging students shred the opponent's goalie and laud each and every Lobo successful goal. Senior Lance Roseboom talked about the Lobo crowd experience. It's uh, one of the best experiences that I've had in my life. Um, we played in a lot of places and um, you know I think ours is honestly top five in the country. I, th I think it's the best. The Lobo men's soccer team celebrated senior night Saturday evening. The players and fans honored Lance Roseboom and Michael Green before playing host to UNLV. Appropriately, seniors Roseboom and Green scored the first two goals by penalty kicks for the Lobos as they defeated UNLV 3 to nothing to go undefeated for the first time in UNM history. Coach Jeremy Fishbein needed time to reflect over his seniors and their accomplishments before he spoke with the media. Most importantly, they care about everybody and, and, and I think that's the mark of uh, a true leader is somebody who's just passionate about his teammates. You can catch the remainder of the Lobo men's soccer season during conference play, which begins this Friday up in Denver. UNM's Air Force ROTC Detachment 510 recently received the 2011 Right of Line Award. Each year, the award is given to the best ROTC detachment in small, medium, and large categories in each region. The unit won the top detachment in the medium-sized categories, competing across 11 states. Detachment 510 conducts community service projects like food drives, blood donations, and demonstrations for veterans each year. In November, the detachment will compete against three other medium-sized detachments in the region. Honestly, it has a lot to do with the programs that we do, the care of the cadets that we provide, because the caliber of cadets is a big indication with all the great things that the cadet wing gets to do. UNM's Research Center is building a satellite that will be launched in 2012 in partnership with NASA. The launch will be a part of, of a mission to send supplies to the International Space Station. Initially set for March, the initial flight has been delayed to December of next year due to mechanical problems with the rocket. Miriam Boleyn has more. Three miles from the UNM campus, a UNM research center is building a trailblazer that will be launched into space in December 2012. 
the Configurable Space Microsystems Innovations and Application Center, or COSMIAC, is building the Trailblazer Satellite. The Trailblazer Satellite will demonstrate space plug-and-play architecture, or SPA. SPA builds on a current model of satellites that takes years to design and develop. Cosmiac research engineer Brian Zufelt said SPA allows every component of the satellite to become independent modules that can be stored and used later. What this will allow us to do is really think of modules within a satellite as a black box. So we can uh, go, to, say, to a catalog of modules, take them off the shelf, plug them together, and build a satellite. This will greatly reduce the development time and cost for future missions. The satellite is a type of nanosatellite called CubeSat. Zufelt said the 4-inch cube nanosatellite cuts costs and saves time. With a large satellite, it's obviously a, a many orders of magnitude more expensive. Um, 100 million is not out of the question. That's actually cheap in some cases. Uh, for a CubeSat, we're doing satellite development to launch for 50,000. Cosmiac director Dr. Steve Sudar said he hopes other programs will begin using the SPA architecture also. Uh, the Trailblazer program is really about um, proving, uh, in this case, many of the basic technologies of plug and play, uh, to prove that it is going to actually be flight worthy. And so once that spacecraft flies and a few others that are related to this program, uh, this hopefully will open the doors for mainline programs, ones that aren't just research and test programs, to begin to consider using this architecture and saving money. And in the end, it's really money in your pocket. If the mission is a success, Cosmiac will publish their work on SPA for other satellite developers to use. This is Miriam Boleyn. You news. That's all, all for our broadcast. For Katie Fosterling and me, Adam Camp, thanks for watching You News.